Well, every couple of weeks, we like to bring Chris Verone on, head of technical analysis over at Strategus Research. Here he is in the house. Good to have you. And you show us charts and help us see things we might not have seen otherwise. You brought the mystery chart. The mystery chart. And right. let's go to the mystery chart and show people what this is. And if you can just talk about what's happening here and then explain what it is. Well, first, let's think about the concept of, of a mystery chart. As chartists, it's important for us to put our biases aside and just look at price action. So when we look at the chart that we brought along with us today, what do we see? First, we see this issue is in a downtrend. It struggled to make new highs. Uh, to us, this looks like a sellable uh, type of chart. Yep. Now, the big reveal, what is it? This is the percent of NYSE stocks that are currently trading above their 200-day average. So what is this telling us? And they're o not many. Only 25% of some 3,500 publicly traded U.S. stocks are above that 200-day moving average. That is not a bull market reading. That is not a reading that gets us feeling too great about what the average stock is doing in this market. And that concept of the average stock is important when you're in a transition from a bull phase to a bear phase. And that looks like uh, what's playing out on the charts right now. Any chance that that could turn and you would get incrementally more bullish? Something to watch. As a measure of this average stock, watch what the Russell 2000 does here. Remember, that's two thirds, almost three fourths of the investable universe of, uh, of the U.S. right here. So, if the average stock is going to break out, the Russell 2000 small caps should break out. So, watch that here and as well. That's not happened yet. Not happened yet. All right, moving on. You got another chart for us, and this is not a mystery chart. Mm -hmm. We're going to explain this right off the bat. This is the Emerging Market Index (EEM) versus the S&P 500. Why don't you talk us through this and why are you looking at it and how you interpret it? Sure. So, we look at EM emerging market as a barometer of risk. EM tends to lead what U.S. stocks do. So we don't like right now that on a relative basis, emerging markets continue to make new lows. This is a two and a half year price low on the relative emerging market chart. So this is indices like China, which is on its lows. Brazil still looks very sellable. India still looks very sellable. So these important risk barometers that measure uh, what type of risk appetite investors are taking still send uh, the risk off message in our view. We don't think that creates a very sustainable backdrop for U.S. stocks to move much higher from here. All right, so there are two reasons you've just outlined and why you wouldn't necessarily like the markets. The first sure. one, right, the fact that stocks are below their 200-day moving average, so many of them, and secondly now emerging markets falling down. All right, let's move on to the euro. Mm. What do you see on the euro? Euro, we had a 65-day low this week. 65-day uh, right. lows tend to precede 52-week lows. So let's just put this in context. If we look at the euro chart, it's still a, a pattern of lower highs and lower lows. More times than not, charts that look like that tend to resolve themselves to the downside, not the upside. Now, the key is here, we are quite oversold on this euro chart. So if we do see rallies, if we do get a bounce back into that maybe 133 neighborhood, And Tom that's... DeMarc has been calling for that. We talked about that earlier in the show. Tom sure. DeMarc thinks the euro is due for a bounce. Yeah, you get it up to 133, 135. For a sellable bounce, and that's the key here. The overall trend is still a bear trend on the euro chart. So when we see these bounces, we want to be sellers in the strength. I think ultimately, looking out to the first quarter next year, first half of 2012, I wouldn't be surprised if you saw 125, 124 in the euro, possibly 118, uh, 119 down the road. It's still a bear pattern on our euro chart. As you're trying to find that bottom, and you see there the dotted lines where the euro has put in some lows in the past, as you just said, 125.80 and uh, 118.70. So perhaps that's where we go. Perhaps it's after you get this little bit of a bounce that, as you say, you might get, and Tom DeMar calling for. Okay, couple of names uh, you like, couple you don't. Priceline, one to avoid. Why? Uh, when we look at the Priceline chart, what do we see? We see a 12-month, very distributive top, rounded top, struggled to make new highs when the whole group has actually acted quite well. Large cap tech, large cap consumer acting well. Why is Priceline not making new highs? It should be. It's not. We take that as a message of weakness. It looks like an unhealthy chart. We'd be using strength to sell. Uh, I think ultimately this one is another chart that resolves itself to the downside, uh, not the upside. Now, let's talk about the inverse of that chart. What looks like the exact opposite of the Priceline chart? Uh, Altria, MO, tobacco, the SIN trade, the vice trade, yep. still looks very good. And, and you like... You like the domestic, which is Philip, uh, which is Altria, which is not Altria. the international Philip Morris PM. Is also, that also a very good chart uh, today, focusing on MO, uh, getting through 28, key breakout, great rounded base. We call it a traditional breakout, uh, 32, 33, I think is the appropriate number to look at. And what's great, a stock like this, you're paid to own it, five and a half percent yield. Um, these are the type of charts that we want to own in this type of risk-off environment. I think that's the big picture today. Hey, you, uh, before we let you go, you spent a lot of time on airplanes traveling around the world, literally, mm -hmm. to see people. Uh, as you go into guys' offices over the past couple of weeks, what has it felt like to you? Yeah, I'd say kind of the big picture, what we're hearing from investors, is it's a very 
uh, hands-off type uh, market right now. People are not invested. Um, there's very little conviction. So what we keep telling people, Adam, whether you're bullish, whether you're bearish, or you're unsure, the fact is we're about three, three and a half years off a of market low, and the stocks you buy in years four and five look very different than the stocks you buy in year one and two. And the stocks you buy in year four and five, which is where we are now, large cap defensive type names like an Altria, like a Family Dollar, like a Walmart, like a Costco, stocks like that. All right, good deal. Chris Verone, Strategus Research. Always great having you on the show. Nice Helping to see, to see things we might not have seen otherwise.